Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another sewing vlog. This time I'm talking about the Friday Pattern Company Wilder Gown. It's one of my all-time favourite dress patterns and I've been sewing it for a long time now. Absolutely love the style and it's just a beautiful dress. And you may know already if you watch my videos but I work for Friday Pattern Company on social media channels but I have been sewing this pattern way before I started working with them and so as you can imagine I was a bit of a fangirl <laughs> um, and I just love it. I've, I've made a few versions now but I've not vlogged making it before. So this video is going to be a chatty vlog. Chelsea, the owner of Friday Pattern Company, has actually made a sew along so you can actually watch the step by step instructions on her video. I've cut out the pieces ready to make my Wilder and I'm really excited. It's one that I've wanted to make for ages and the fabric has been set in my stash for ages as well and I just haven't got around to it. It's kind of a loose, bellowy, kind of tiered dress that does up in a bow at the neckline. It has a raglan sleeve which means you sew the sleeve in flat and then it's just beautiful. It comes together super quick and easy. The gathering around the front is how you kind of take the dress on and off because it's got like a little tie and it brings it all together at the neck to kind of, yeah, bring it in at the neck and it has lovely gathers and things. You can make this as a top, a kind of normal dress length or a two tier dress and because of the skirt, the skirt is essentially just a rectangle, it gives you the ability to mix and match and change it up like in as many ways as you want. So I'm going to make a dress version and I've got some beautiful colour blocking fabrics that I'm going to be doing for this. So I've done a little sketch which I'll show you. So this is the concept for the dress that I'm going to make today and I want to go for a colour block kind of style. I've seen a few designers do this kind of thing and I absolutely love it but I wanted to make kind of my own version of my own colours and yeah I'm really excited actually um, so I'll show you the fabrics but it's kind of got a rust body, green sleeves, a pink skirt and then a lilac um, ruffle on the bottom and then the lilac will be sort of tied in together with the, the neck bow so very really excited about the colours. I hope it looks nice at the end but I think it should. I've cut out my pieces, apologies for the mess. <laughs> um, the actual fabrics are so slippery that I know for a fact, I've worked with slippery fabrics in the past, it's going to be a bundle of laughs to work with. Because I am working with such a lightweight fabric, I can't actually remember what it is, I, I think it's like a silk chiffon or something like that, but I picked up my fabrics from a shop on Goldhawk Road in London, so I can't remember the exact name of the fabric type, but Yes, I picked them up from a, a Goldhawk Road store that I walked into and then and brought them. So yeah, hopefully you can find some fabric similar online. There's lots of lovely chiffons and stuff. As I was saying, with slippery fabrics, what I will probably do with this, even though it takes forever, because you've got to do every single seam process twice, but I'm going to do French seams, which essentially means you sew wrong sides together and then your right side together so that you get a really clean seam finish. There's no like fraying, you don't have to do overlocking and when something's quite semi sheer, um, your fabric is like sheer or something, you get a cleaner finish and it, it just looks a lot nicer. Hey, so I'm about to sew together my top pieces of the Wilder and this fabric is so slinky so what I'll do is I'll do a test piece first and I'm using these just universal machine needles but an 80 needle so hopefully that'll be okay but I'm going to do a test stitch and then see how it comes out. So I've just done a test stitch and it's absolutely fine, no problems at all so I can go ahead and start sewing. Um, with the top I think what you have to do really is match it right side together and then you've got to like sew down part way to where the notch is with like a, a slightly bigger stitch on the machine because you're going to be unpicking it later and that becomes like the open neckline similar to the shirt I guess. Um, so yeah you stitch down to the notch and then you just put it onto a regular stitch and stitch down the rest. So I'm going to make sure that it's right sides together. Just going to check and make sure. So this fabric's really hard to tell if it is the right side or not. <laughs> so I'll match them up and pin them together. Again, it is so slippery, this fabric, so I'm 
not particularly looking forward to working with it. So those are together like that and what I need to do is just do that big stitch that I mentioned to the notch and then from the notch to the bottom do a normal stitch and it's 5 8 seam allowance so I can do that now. Change that on the machine to 4. nice and then I've got this I had to show you guys how cute is this I got this from Hobbycraft and I just thought it was adorable for tabletop seams so that means I don't have to like go downstairs and do any you know annoying ironing um, so I can open this up and I'm going to use my little mini Cricut Easy Press for this so you have to like lay it flat um, and open those seams up and fold them under themselves so the rest of this make I'm actually going to do with French seams, well I hope to anyway and we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm going to do this one as it states in the instructions because you kind of need to and then the rest I'm going to hope to do in French seams so I'll top down and show you this guys. Put it on my little iron. So once that's done, we turn that underneath. I'm going to roll it when I'm at the machine, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch it, or try to at least. <laughs> Now I can unpick that bit that I mentioned from the figure stitches, so it's about from here. So you just kind of go in and then unpick. Got a bed, but I rather be in yours tonight. I got a bed, but I rather be in yours. So with French seams, I'm now about to do the sleeve against the front body, matching front notches, but instead of doing it right sides to right sides together, you actually do wrong side to wrong side together first. And it's a 5 8 seam allowance, so you just need to half it and then basically sew that half on the wrong side. And then when you flip it back over to sew it, um, you encase that, that seam that you've just done inside, so it makes it a really neat seam. So once that's pinned together, I'm just going to sew, like I said, um, 10 millimetres. Um, should I do it 10? I might even just do it up against the foot of the sewing machine rather than 10. That should be fine. So that seam is done and then what you need to do, I'll iron that just so it's nice and flat, but then you put it right side, right side together and then you pin this and then you would sew it again with the 10 millimeter or basically half that 5 eighths encasing that seam that you've just done inside it so it's really really neat finish. So I will sew that and then I'll do a close up to the camera so you can kind of see how it looks when it's done. So this is that uh, seam done. Do a little close up. Look how neat that is. So you've essentially encased the other seam inside it and that's essentially what a French seam is. I'm not going to claim to be amazing at them but can you just see like with semi sheer fabrics it just makes the world of difference in terms of how neat it looks and that's the inside this is the outside so yeah lovely and neat so I'm gonna go ahead and attach the other sleeve to this side and then I can go and put the back on it as well in the exact same way hey guys so I thought I'd show you what I've done so far at the moment it kind of just looks like a weird like shape <laughs> because without the neckline in it it kind of that like brings it all together it just looks a bit weird so that's kind of where I'm at but um I just need to do the neckline 
where you turn it round and everything. And then I've got my pieces, oh they've dropped on the floor, but I've got um, the actual necktie to do. And I've made a start on the skirt, so I'm just doing my French seams as I did with the top half on the side seam. So I'm just sewing those together now, and then I can start the gathering process where I gather the skirt top. Now I've made it, you're probably thinking it looks quite long, I've made it purposely wide as the fabric is wide. I think it's about, it must be about, um, I'm gonna say 120 maybe this width was. Um, but I purposely have made it longer because it's such a floaty like fabric. I wanted it extra gathered um, because I think it kind of needed it. And then with, I'm gonna put a bottom ruffle on it in this lilac. I've got three panels of this in the same width. So instead of two panels, I've got three, and then I will obviously add that to the bottom of the skirt as well, which I'm not looking forward to because I hate adding ruffles onto another skirt. It just takes forever to do all the gathers and make it all look like good, so especially in this silky fabric. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna sew this bit, and then I might call it a day for today because I've just got, honestly, such a bad headache right now. I've had like three days of migraines, so yeah, that's why I'm sat in my glasses. Um, so yeah, it's so far so good. French seams just take a bit longer because essentially you're making the pattern twice. Um, hi guys, it's Sunday, so a couple of days later and I've just been struck down with a migraine so I haven't, I didn't get to finish the world the other day. But I thought I'd show you where I'm at and we're going to hopefully finish it in today's sewing session. So the top is together and the skirt is now attached, all those lovely gathers that I did um, is all attached now so I can go ahead and do the last bit which is attaching the bottom layer so I'm going to do like a little frill gathered layer at the bottom which might take me a while because the gathers, gathers just take forever and it's going to be an extra extra long piece and yeah, um, one thing I did do which is really cool, I haven't finished it yet as you can see is the neckline is obviously panelled like this and usually you'd have to do two stitches all the way across if it was the same fabric you'd obviously just go and do it with the same thread colour but because I've got these colour blocks I had to do the sections of stitching <laughs> um, in the thread colour that it's needed so I, as you can see this bit is still open so what I need to do is I'm going to do all the lilac stuff first because I've got my machine uh, ready with the thread colour that I need so my necktie or like the little thing that I'm going to thread through is going to be in the same lilac colour so that the frill on the bottom of the skirt and the necktie like matches and so once I've sewn all of those pieces I will then change my machine thread colour to a mint green so I can finish it and that will be it so I can finish it off so yeah um, I love sewing the wilder because it's such a like lovely easy make and Although I've had a migraine, so I've done this in like three different sewing sessions, usually I could just make it in a day, which is really nice. So I've just finished the dress and I thought before I showed you the dress on and finished I would just come and show you a few of the details and like explain kind of how I did it and stuff. I'm just going to tie this neckline up. Okay so here's the finished dress. I absolutely love it. There's the skirt. I need to iron it so ignore the fact it's looking a bit creasy. That will kind of all even out once I've given it a good iron. So there we have it. I've then added a little bit of elastic in the sleeve. What I've done is I cut out the, the three quarter length sleeve, but when I cut it out, I cut out a medium for my size and for the pattern, but I actually graded from the middle of the sleeve pattern to the end to the size up. So what you could do, similar to me, I just wanted to make sure there was extra, even just like a few millimetres of fabric, so I could have a little bit of extra at the bottom so that when I gathered it in, it wasn't too tight around my wrist. So I just graded the pattern from the medium to the large, just like very, very slowly, like to the, to the cuff, like the hem. So it just meant I could put a little bit of elastic in. And actually the pattern is quite like boxy, and it's quite um, like 
it's quite generous in terms of the sleeve so actually when you bring it in it, you're only bringing it in a little bit but it just gives it that effect you know um, like a little cuffed hem and it just brings it in a bit anyway I think it looks really really cute uh, the gathering of this ruffled hem bit was a nightmare but I got there in the end and it looks really effective I love the swishiness of it I do actually have to wear a slip dress underneath so I am eventually gonna make a nude colored slip dress I've been meaning to make one for ages for all of my kind of slinkier dresses um, and summer dresses and stuff so this is kind of the perfect opportunity to make one and then also just to show you a detail as well I use French seams on all of the seams as you guys saw earlier so you'll see on the inside my French seam but then to finish off the gathering of the skirt I literally just did a zigzag because I couldn't be bothered to get my serger out so I did a zigzag all the way across and then just trimmed the edges down I mean forgive the, <laughs> the messy cutting but obviously you don't see that and it just helps to stop it from fraying uh, and breaking you know so it just gives it a bit of re extra reinforcement on that stitch so yeah there's another one that's the skirt attached to the top that's it, so I will go ahead and show you the dress on. 